Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan and we have Daniel Mercury again. Do you still want to introduce yourself again to our audience? Oh sure, again. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Daniel Mercury. I'm a husband, father, small business owner, and a, a veteran uh, of the United States Navy. Uh, my uh, last command was with uh, Helicopter Squadron 4, the Black Knights, where I performed uh, search and rescue, combat search and rescue, and I was a rescue swimmer. I served in uh, Operation Southern Watch, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. Oh, wow, Iraqi Freedom. Well, you go places, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, you always go on tour. So uh -huh. we went out, uh, call it Westpac, because we're on the West Coast, so we call it Westpac. But yeah, you go out, uh, travel the world. Uh, and of course, at that time, you know, I was out in the Gulf, and had to perform all those operations out there. So it's a, the Gulf is a, not a fun place. I mean, it's uh, muggy, it's hot, it's, uh, it smells of burning sulfur and oil because the whole area is just you know, constantly pumping out oil in all those regions. A time in my life that uh, I would never change because I believe I served with some of the best and toughest men and women that uh, I think um, I'll ever get to serve with. You know? Wow. Well, today's topic is going to be focusing on our government, California government especially, because we see a lot of corruption and then the election integrity is just not there. What do you think the problem is in California? I think the problem in California is the language. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand why the legislative language is so dangerous right now. And... One of the things that we have to focus on is the fact that under the Declaration of Independence of being of nature and nature's God means that we fall under common law. Mm -hmm. When you look at some of the egregious legislation that has passed, if we look at SB 2223, it's the bill that everybody called infanticide, right? Mm. Um, what that basically, what we look at is when we read the bill, Buffy Wicks, who was the um, originator of it, if you look at many of the drafts, you'll see that she eventually removed the words crimes against nature. The reason why the crimes against nature had to be removed was because of the fact they need to remove, again, that which falls under God and put us under civil, mm -hmm. which is contract, which is a different language. And so this is why a lot of people, you know, when they say, well, women have a right to abortion. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, when you look, you have to go back to the original writings. The Declaration of Independence says of nature and nature's God. When a man and a woman consummate, it is at the moment of conception that life begins. That is a product of the natural occurring environment, which is why the word nature is so important. And when you remove against crimes against nature, you're removing a crime against killing an, an innocent child in the womb. Why? Because that is the natural occurring a process that a man and woman can carry on to the future. In order for us to carry on into the future, we have to do it through our posterity. That means our children. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way to do that is to ensure that the natural process between humans, a man and a woman who can procreate, cannot be disrupted. Mm -hmm. Well, you disrupt it when you involve and you draft egregious legislation by trying to change the language. So they changed the language to, or they removed it. Well, that's egregious because when you swear the oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the state constitution, when you swear that oath, you are swearing an oath to uphold that, meaning that you cannot engage in an other unlawful mean. Mm -hmm. right? We have California government codes, we have title US codes that stipulate that representatives cannot or the people cannot engage in any form of other unlawful mean that would be a form of overthrowing the government. Yeah. Changing the language, even drafting the language with you swearing the oath stipulates that you would be in violation. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what they're doing because the people are not educated on that. When you look at, I think it's SB 1149, this allows California to block parents from opening up their child's medical record that is 12 years old or older. Mm -hmm. So what they did was is they changed parent and redefined parent as representative. Mm -hmm. So you're no longer a parent, you're a representative. So the representative can no longer look into their own child's medical record. So the hospitals will not be in violation in preventing that. So if your 12 year old decides to go and get an abortion and they don't want their parents finding out about it, the hospitals aren't going to open up the medical record. If your child decides to go get the COVID-19 shot 
from some sort of egregious urgent care of some kind and they're okay doing that because there are there are a lot of legal activities going on they can do that if they want to go get drugs of some kind if you go up to san francisco right they have all of these dispensers mm -hmm. your child can go get it and if they are on drugs but they don't want their parents to know about it right and they want something that's going to help them remedy because maybe they got sick their parents will not know about it and mm -hmm. this is from 12 and up and it's because in california they also redefined years ago what a minor is so a minor is 12 and up and a child is 11 years and under. Mm -hmm. So they have separated that. Yeah. So they're trying to, again, change the language. And when they change the language, then they're permitted to pass repugnant legislation. And this is where everything falls on deaf ears because you're wondering, well, why aren't they listening to us? Because you're not intelligent enough to pay attention to the language and the drafting of the language. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't have time to keep up. That's done on purpose. They don't want you to keep up. Yes. Your legislators are heavy at work because between 2019 and 2020, your legislators drafted over 4,900 bills. Gavin Newsom signed almost 1,000 of those into law. Wow. That's not for your benefit. Uh-huh. Their job is to ensure that the sanctity of the Constitution and the state Constitution stays intact. Mm -hmm. Not to make back-ended business deals where they will draft an AB or SB bill. We call them assembly bills or state senate bills. And what they do is, is, is that your lobbyists go to them and they make a deal. Now, the reason why that's legal is because, well, you can petition your government. Now, the corporations can't do that directly, so they send a representative. That's legal. Mm -hmm. That's an in-between. It's a middleman. And they speak on behalf of a corporation or, the, or Fortune 500 or a union and so on. And so then what happens is, is your representatives will create or draft what's called the model bill. Now, real journalists back in 18 and 19 uh, did some research to find out if the language was similar in other bills, even with our congressional bills. And they found that they were utilizing what's called the model bill. Mm -hmm. So a lot of states utilize this too, where the language is very similar and it's drafted in such a way that the format is, is similar to other bills. And so it's a plug and play. Uh -huh. because the language and most of your assembly bills and state bills are not necessarily drafted by your representative they're drafted by the corporation's lawyers and what they do is, is they change the language or they try to change the perception or wherever it's not mentioned they will look for a loophole and then they'll tie that corporation's ideologies or desires to the bill that then they give out to the people to vote on or they'll put it on the floor. If it's something they can put on the floor, then they just all vote on it. If it's something that has gotten a lot of awareness, they'll put it out as a vote to the people. This is why when a proposition comes out, right, sometimes when you vote yes, you really feel like you voted no, and if you voted no, you really feel like you voted yes. <laughs> yes, yes, right? And that's so confusing every election. What should I vote on this? And then there's this party says no, and this party says yes. When you look at it, you just simply don't understand it. No, and now they're drafting a bill where it doesn't matter if you vote yes or whether you not vote no. It's going to serve their purpose either way. Yeah. Because it's always going to favor these corporations. It's always going to favor these lobbyists. It's going to favor these unions. And the reason why that's done is because we are running the state like a business. Yeah, it's like you, the Green New Deal. The and, green, all ooh. of these deals, climate change, everything is around businesses. They surround themselves with business models. And so what is the purpose of any corporation? Mm -hmm. The purpose of any corporation is profit. Yeah. So they have to meet a profit margin. Uh -huh. So this is why I've been going around and showing how this works to all of these groups. And of course, you know, people get angry, they, they stomp, they leave the room. It's not that they can't believe it. It's just that they can't believe that they have been swindled. Yeah. And they don't know what to do about it. And That's it's very simple, but I didn't understand this until I ran for Congress because, again, everything falls into the contract, right? It's the exploitation of the contract clause. So when I ran for Congress, right, I was given all kinds of packets in the mail from super PACs, from unions, from special interest groups. And a lot of them would stipulate that they would support my campaign. Mm -hmm. But uh, in order for them to support my campaign and that they were going to donate to my campaign, that I had to sign the agreement. I had to sign the contract. So I looked at that and I thought, well, okay, I have to sign the contract, okay, and because you, you want to support my campaign, sounds fair enough. But then down below, it would stipulate that I would have to take the money that they'd give me if they were going to show support. Why do I have to take your money? 
Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's written slightly differently in each of these packets that I was getting in the mail. I don't have them anymore because I had no intentions in running after Congress. But once COVID-19 had happened, once the lockdowns had happened, I realized I knew way too much to just sit on my hands and do nothing. Yeah. I had to divulge the information. I had to get involved. And I understood that the key position was the governor position. So I really went out of my way to understand this position. But it backtracked to these contracts. And I realized if I sign these agreements, then I am beholden to that union. I am beholden to that corporation because I took the money. Yeah. And so it is within the contract. And this is why a lot of times your newly elected representative that you got behind and you loved them and you felt like they were, you know, faith believers and that they were really, you know, understood the laws and, you know, they, they had all these accolades suddenly do a 180 on you. Is that so? They because they're under actually, the contract. They, they can, can actually control the candidate? Yes, oh, because of the okay. contract. Because the Article 1, Section 10 stipulates, and I'm going to paraphrase because it's long, but it says that the states cannot come up with a law to prevent the obligation of a contract. So that means the right to a contract is not limited. That means your government can engage in what's called legal fraudulent concealment. That means that they can in draft any contract that they want, even if it's not in agreement with the supreme law of the land, the courts don't care. The courts are going to take the Constitution. They're going to throw it out. It does not apply because the states cannot come with the law to prevent the fulfillment of it. So then they exploit that. So then when a union goes to a representative who is maybe a candidate at the time and they feel like that candidate is you know, shaking the right cages, doing the right thing, the popularity is blown, they will blanket the landscape. Uh -huh. And they will fund them and they will get them under contract. And so I got phone calls and they said, did you get our contract? I said, yeah, of course I did. And they said, well, what do you think? Could you use $50,000? That's the max what a super PAC can offer. And I said, sure, of course. What, what candidate can't use 50 Gs? Uh -huh. But I, I'm not understanding all of these other clauses down here because there was all these little codes that were written in the document. Yeah. And they said, don't worry about that. Uh, we have also... <laughs> Over 2,500 members. So again, they called me and said, we, we can give you $50,000 and we have over 2,500 members. And I said, okay, why does that matter? And they said, well, each of these members can give you on their own uh, an individual donation. We'll just pay them back. Uh -huh. And the max for individual donation is $2,500 at that time. And 50,000 as super PAC at that time, back in 2019. And I thought, well, wait a second. How does, I don't understand. So you're basically exploiting a loophole. Yeah. And they said, well, don't worry about that. They said, just sign it and you know we're going to make things happen. And I said, well, what if I lose? And they said, well, I'll tell you what. You sign the agreement and we'll get you the $50,000 and then we'll get you the uh, additional um, individual donations. And so now you multiply 2,500 by 2,500 members. You can do the math. That's enticing to any candidate. Yeah. And so they would then say, and we'll even show you how to keep the money even if you lose and you run it through a nonprofit organization. And we'll show you how to be on the advisory board and we'll show you how you can attach a new bank account and how we can route the money. And then you can walk away with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is insane. This is how it works, but it's a legal loophole. Let's say I was, I was to get into office. If I am to do or say anything that would counter against that union or that corporation or that could negatively affect that that group they could hold me liable in court so this is why then if your newly elected representative stands mm. in front of the lens and they say listen we're going to hold our electric company accountable and you took money from a lobbyist that was attached to that company unknowingly because you didn't do your research, right? Or they used a front company or they used a front group and you didn't quite understand that that was different, right? A lot of people sometimes go work for an employer, yeah. but, they get, but their paycheck comes from another business entity. Yeah, that's yeah. because, again, that's a separation between the two, right? So the company gets sued, but all their assets are separate, right? So that's legal and that's a way to cover yourself so that you don't lose everything, right? So a lot of times lobbyists will come in representing the front company, but not actually the the, uh, the back end company that's actually the heart or the foundation of the front. So a lot of times they have layers. And so what ends up happening is, is then, you know, they have to go out in public and say, you know, I, I said I was going to do something, but I, I didn't know what I know now. And so I'm going to have to recant. Now they look like a liar. Yeah. Because they have to be, because they're under the contract, but they can't divulge that to you because, well, they didn't know any better. 
And so not every candidate gets approached by these groups, only the ones who are rattling the cages, saying the right things, stirring the pot, right? Well, I was stirring the pot and I was rattling the cages and there were already some favoritisms, but I was moving around very quickly, very fast. And I just started realizing I need to just say the things that need to be said. I, you know, when I was running for Congress, you know, I was trying to be poised and I was trying to be polite and I was trying to be collected and, you know, say the right things and look appropriate. But I realized I need to stop doing that. I need to just be me and I need to understand that, you know, people are tired of the fakeism and they're tired of, of just the lies. They just yes. want real people because, well, that's what I want. Yeah. Right? I'm not looking for a perfect human being because we're not perfect. I'm looking for someone who understands what's going on. Who's I, And here's the other thing. People say, well, you're going to do the right thing. No, I have no intentions in doing the right thing. I don't care to do the right thing. It is not my interest to do the right thing because your right thing and my right thing are not the same. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the God-given constitutionally right thing because that is the foundation to our country. That's what I'm going to do. Now we have, an, a, we have a, a basis to start from yeah. that we can agree on. Yeah. There's a lot of problem within uh, California's uh, Republican Party. Yes. I don't know how Brian Daly got up and become our candidate for governor. There, there's just so many weak candidates. Yeah. All the strong one and all the one with idea and all the one that want to change things up, nothing happened to them. So uh, what do you think the problem is within the California's Republican Party? Well, I think what's wrong with the Republican GOP party is the fact that there are a lot of reprobates that are within the group. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the California GOP or the Los Angeles GOP, there are a lot of members that are at, in core positions that are just swine. In fact, I, I encountered a couple of them during the recall because during that time, I challenged all of the candidates to a debate. The differences with my debate was that um, when you usually do a debate, you're invited you know, with some of these forums or these other groups or whatever, and they want to put all the candidates together or even with the mainstream media, a lot of times they will only pick particular candidates. They'll pick the, you know, the favorites <clears throat> and they'll only talk about them. They won't, they won't make it a fair field. So I wanted to remove that and get away from antiquated you know, tactics and things that were just egregious that didn't paint the, the, the correct landscape. Mm. So while well, some of the California GOP members that have been in since Reagan and helped get Reagan into office, started calling my campaign. And they were cornering my campaign manager. And they were telling my manager, you know, well, we don't want you to be Daniel's campaign manager. We want you to be Daniel's handler and one of his handlers. In fact, we've got a, a group of handlers that we think can uh, really uh, uh, help him, you know, kind of grow his political career. <clears throat> and so, you know, my campaign manager at the time, too, kind of felt like he was a little out of his league. Yeah. And I said, no, you're just as green as what I need because I know that what's going on is, is sort of a military tactic. Yes. Right? You divide and conquer. Yes, yes. And they wanted to use my veteran status because, well, I, I'm untainted. I'm untouched. I haven't been you know, compromised. And they wanted to utilize that so that they could generate more money. So yeah. they wanted me to go up north to kind of sit at the dinners but not speak. So while all the other candidates like Falconer and John Cox and, and uh, you know, Caitlyn Jenner at the time, uh, Doug Osi. <laughs> You know, all these candidates at the time, you know, they would, they would go to the dinner. They would all have some, you know, five, ten minutes to speak, but not me. So now it looks like I'm acquiescing, but I'm help raising money because, you know, I'm a, a young political figure that they felt like that they could, they could bring up. So one of the things was I finally had enough and I just said, you know, told my campaign manager, I said, call some of these people back and just set up a, a, a Zoom conference. I wish to God I recorded it, but again, I was, I'm trying to adhere to being, you know, professional here. And it turned into a big screaming match. Because I realized they were degenerates. They just wanted to raise money. They just wanted to uh, keep the money flowing. In fact, the California GOP does nothing to support their candidates in such a way that you know uh, will donate to their campaigns. Whereas the DNC, they'll they'll flood all of their candidates with money, whether they feel like they're going to win or not. You know they'll do that. So they're they've got their act together. And even though they know they're going to cheat, they're in an agreement about the cheating. They're working together. They don't care. They know what they're going to do, and they're going to snarl, lie, cheat, and steal to make sure that they get their candidate in to maintain that power. But they're in agreement with that, whereas the GOP isn't interested in, in you know, unifying. They just want to keep the money in because some of the campaign funding is tied to the DNC as well. Mm -hmm. And so I, wouldn't, I wasn't willing to go along. And in this process, I decided to stop because it started becoming a, just a big screaming match. And then all of a sudden, you know, foul language started to get thrown around. And I said, wait, wait, wait. I said, let me just ask. And I asked this gentleman, and I said, I said, do you believe in God? And he stops and he says, 
well, of course I believe in God. And I said, great, let's start there. Let me ask you for forgiveness. I apologize for my tone. I apologize for this getting out of control. Listen, I didn't call you. Uh, you've been calling me. I simply set this up so that we could kind of stop playing phone tag and you cornering my manager. What do you want? Mm -hmm. And uh, this gentleman said, well, you know, we, we want you to understand we want to build you up. And I said, I appreciate that, but I'm not asking to be built up and I'm not asking for handlers. So really, what is going on here? You believe in God is what you just said. Yes, of course I do. I said, great. Let me redefine this question. Which God? Well, I believe in the God of the Bible is what he said. And I said, me too. I said, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Who's yours? And he says, what do you mean? I said, you said the God of the Bible. Well, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Who's yours? Because there are a lot of deities in the Bible. Mm. So which one is your God? And he pushed back off of his chair. He crossed his arms. He pulls himself back and he says, F you, F you, you mother effer. I don't have to listen to you. You're an F in this and an F in that. He went on for about a wow. minute. Wow, how little old is this guy? Of just, uh, well, he was one of the individuals who helped get Reagan into office. He's Stop. still there. And, of course, at the end of this, you know, I cut the conversation off. I just said, you know what, you, you've kind of outlived your usefulness. There's nothing I need from this group, and I, I'm not here to be bought off. You can't buy me. I can't be bought. I won't be bought. I'm not going to sell out. So, and I've already been threatened. My family's been threatened. I've had, you know, goon squads come knock on my door. You're messing with the wrong person. I don't care. I've already put my life on the line. My family are, I come from a family of fighters. All the men in my family have been in the military. And we didn't grow up rich. We grew up poor. We grew up on the streets. We grew up with very little. So it's not difficult for me when people try to, you know, come at me or threaten me. Or, you know, goon squads comes pounding on my, on my car doors and tries to shake me up and throw things. I've been spit at. I've been cussed at. Right? I've had people take swings at me. This is what you get depending on where you stand. And so bring it. But they don't like candidates like that because now they can't control you. Mm -hmm. You're not willing to be bought. You aren't interested in money. You stand on principle. They don't want candidates that stand on principle. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about candidates like Dolly, well, you know, one of the things that I can look at as an inconsistency is, you know, the family unit. Yes. Well, here's a gentleman who went from District 1 as an assembly to state senator. And so when the AB 860 uh, vote came out, AB 860 was the number one contributing factor to a presidential stolen election was the mail-in ballot. Now, as California, we are a permanent uh, mail-in state, right? Yeah. So now absentee ballots go out to everybody. Yeah. And you can mail it in. Well, Dolly voted no, mm -hmm. but his wife voted yes. So there's there no unity on the home front. You see how that works? So they canceled each other out as if to not have any say. So why, So he voted no to make himself look good. She voted yes to kind of help to support, but that kind of canceled out the vote. So, so basically, you're for it. Mm -hmm. You have no unity on the home front. Why do I want you in office? Some people say, well, I haven't heard of you, you know, Daniel. Well, that's because the GOP shut me down Yeah. because I would not go along. In fact, they were like, we don't want you talking to the GOP up north. We don't want you talking to our groups. We're not even going to invite you. So I wasn't even invited to a lot of some of their conventions, yeah. or which I could go if I was a member, or you know uh, all the other you know Republican groups. They were told by the GOP, don't invite certain candidates, right? Is so that, that so? Yeah. So that's kind of how it works. This is why a lot of people get squashed, or even uh, your social media. They're in lockstep with the media and social media. So they'll push certain social media videos and social media platforms for the candidate that they like. They'll shut down the other ones or, or um, shadow ban them. And I got shadow all for banned. money too. All for money. And I wasn't willing to raise the money for them. Yeah. So now I said, you know what? Fine. I'm going to take the next four years now. Now that I understand how this works, I understand I learned the contracts and how it gets exploited in Congress. I understand you know, the tactics that they use during the recall. And I was making more of a, a, a shakeup during the prime, but I just didn't have enough momentum. But I was actually getting groups that were, they were endorsing one candidate and they would recant on that and they would re-endorse me. Yeah. I'm just not somebody who's out there seeking endorsement. If you endorse me, God bless you. Thank you so much. You know, it's appreciated, but you're not going to get anything out of me. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, what favor can I get? Because a lot of times endorsements come with a contract or they come with favoritism or they come with, you know, money. Mm. And, you know, they're going to contribute to your campaign, but there's always a back-ended deal. Whether it's a formal contract or an informal contract, it's still legal and it can still be held up in a court of law. Uh -huh. So you're 
your candidates, you have to be very careful about where does their money come from, and and is there a tie to that, yeah. right? So when you look at Dolly, well, apparently Dolly magically got it. You know, he got the endorsement. Well, how did he do that? He never ran. He was almost never out there. We never, I never saw, I even saw some of the Democrat candidates. Yeah, some people say, yeah, I saw him once or twice. He had one or two, you know, um, events, but that was it. Yeah. And somehow he magically won over the votes. No, there's a whole other research. I put a video up on up on my Facebook page. You can watch it. You can watch it on my Instagram. It's called uh, Republican or Rhino, the lesser of two evils. And I break down the top four candidates. Mm -hmm. And watch, it's a short video. I think it's like 10, 15 minutes long. And I break down all of the red flags and why else, you know, we've got a lot of corruption at the GOP level. So I tell people, listen, don't pay attention to the R next to my name or the D next to my name because they're both wings of the same bird. But when you run for office, you have to pick one or the other. And people say, well, why don't you pick a Democrat? Well, because my values don't align with, you know, progressivism. Mm -hmm. They don't. And I align more so conservatively. Yeah. Because I believe in God. I believe in the original writings of the Constitution, which made this great nation. And to all the people that are out there that are like, well, you know, they want to push Marxism and socialism and, and any, all the other isms, go to that country. Go live there. I guarantee you're going to come right back to this country and go, nope, I was completely wrong. That was a mistake on my part. But because they're uneducated. <laughs> yes. Right? Everybody's fleeing these, these countries that are like that to here because there's still hope here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of countries are still watching what's going on in America because there's still hope here. And so when people look at my R or my D, they're forgetting to look at the nature of the character of the candidate. Mm -hmm. Well, what can the people do to help you? Because it's a huge machine, not just the, the, uh, the Republican Party. The whole California government is a huge machine yes. that is like making righteous candidate crumble. What can, what can we do? to get you into office and what can we do to help you with your com campaign your audience can do or is one is to is to invite me to a group that you have whether it's comprised of two people or a hundred people or you want to do a zoom and you want to see the presentation the presentation is in bits and pieces up all over you know my internet on my web pages and up on uh, social media platforms but to understand it in length you have to kind of see it. You have to be a part of it. You have to be aware of it because it does. It strikes a lot of people. You, yeah. you two were, were struck by it. Yeah. Um, you've seen it. You understand a portion of it. What that does is it brings, it brings sort of the aha moment to everybody. So the first yeah. thing that I, I always tell people is one of the biggest things that you can do is if you've got a group, invite me down mm -hmm. to, get, to begin the educational process. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you're going to get behind any candidate, whether it's me or myself, you need to pick up the California State Constitution and the Constitution of the United States, and you need to learn that because you're never going to know what to ask a candidate as to where they really stand until you know the laws yes. or until you know the foundational documents that they try to establish a new policy. Well, policy mandates, regulations, they are designed to control the behavior of your representatives. They cannot control the behavior of your people. So policy mandates and regulations are designed to control themselves, your representatives. The state constitution does not permit your representatives to create policies, mandates, and regulations that control the behavior of the people. Mm -hmm. That was never granted to them. When you know this, then you can easily look at the candidates' policies and know if they've even read the state constitution. Yeah. And when they haven't, then you know that's not the candidate for you. Or if you want to eliminate them, then you need to put them in the hot seat so that they are fully aware that they're not right for the position. So the best thing that you can do is do that. Uh -huh. And then number three is I always tell people, listen, if you want to contribute to my campaign, you don't always have to contribute money. It's not about the money. Money helps, right? Putting gas in my car, uh, you know, putting food in my stomach. If I have to stay somewhere, of course, those are always really helpful because I've been using my own dime on this. I'm not a rich man, but I, I understand how hard everybody works. But one thing I always tell people that you can do is, is you can also go on my social media pages. Find one of my many videos that you like that sort of represents what I stand on and go onto your email and email blast everybody that you know and send a leak and say, check out this guy, check out Daniel Mercury. He's gonna be running again for the 2026. You might wanna look into him. Here's his website. That takes you less than five minutes, costs you absolutely nothing, and it gets the word out organically, mm -hmm. which is a way to fight against the big money machine because you can't stop that because that 
happens just organically. This is how you get really grassroots business when people are just walking by and they just see your business and you had no advertising, right? It's just word of mouth. Word of mouth is something that is very difficult for money machines to stop. That yes. grassroots Americana is very difficult to stop. So your corrupt government cannot control 40 million people in California. There's 40 million roughly depending on the census or the accuracy of the census, but they can't control 40 million votes. Mm -hmm. But they can divide you because they only need to ensure that maybe 12 to 13 million people vote. And out of the 12 to 13, they only need a little more than half. Yeah, That's all they need. That's what, six, seven million votes maybe? That's all they need to keep the status quo. You want to get somebody like me in office, those are some of the ways that you can do that so that I can get out there and educate everybody on what they need to do, how it all started, and what we can do to fight back and, and have laser-like focus. And then come the 2025, that's when I'm, I will be accepting you know, campaign donations if you really want to contribute. If you don't have the funds and you want to be on my team, call and ask because by that time too, you know, the team's going to be growing really big and I could use door knockers. You know, people just handing out a flyer, leaving them in cars, whatever, or just call your GOP groups or your, your Republican groups or your Patriot groups and say, invite Daniel down. You're going to want to hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best things that can, you can do, and it really doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So please continue to fight for us and then uh, well, fight for yourself, too. And I fight for my family. I fight for everybody here. Uh, all I want is my state back. My yes. Country back. Yes. Take our state back. That's the main thing. So thank you guys for watching. And I'm so excited to meet this amazing future governor. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is Ethan and this is Daniel Mercury. So thank you and we'll see you next time.